Welcome to the Zentangle Project Pack Series. My name is Martha. And I'm Molly. Hi, Molly. Hi. <laughs> Here we are with another lesson for Project Pack number 13. Um, the theme of this project is transitions, and Molly and I are looking forward to exploring. Um, I guess on this tile, we're going to take a tangle that's pretty metered and one that maybe people know about, and then, you know, showing how that can morph into a tangulation of itself. So it's kind of a transition from one to another. And also with um, shades of gray and black. Oh, and layers and, and all in kinds between. of fun stuff, yeah. Um, so we will be working with the materials found in this project pack. And these project packs are available from some of our certified Zentangle teachers and from Zentangle.com. If you don't have this particular project pack, don't sweat it. Scoop up whatever materials you have at home and try to follow along and make do with whatever it is you can find. We welcome everyone. We recommend watching the introduction video to this series first, but the rest of the videos in the project pack number 13 series can be viewed in any order. So let's get started, Miss Martha. Here we go. All right, rock and roll. So we're gonna be working on a, um, a white square, three and a half inch tile here. And then um, throughout the lesson, we're gonna be working with some different materials, but um, I believe these are all of them. A graphite pencil, a charcoal white pencil, paintbrush, general sketch and wash graphite pencil. This is a fun one. Um, a Tortillon and um, a, mi a black Micron 01. So I'm gonna if put you those have a favorite aside. black pen, I think you could probably use. Any oh, black yeah. Pen. If you, you would like a PN them. or if you want yeah. um, something that's different, different thicker. Thickness, yeah. yeah, we always welcome that for sure. So once you have all your materials ready, um, I always encourage my students to get. Um, your sort of place ready, like maybe your seat, make sure you're comfortable. Um, if you wanna get your lighting ready, if you wanna get your room comfortable, whatever makes your space um, ready to go. And then once you have your body and your environment ready um, and your materials all ready to go, I invite you to just take a moment for the first step in the Zentangle method, and that is gratitude. And this can mean something different for everybody. So just hold that place for you and maybe take a moment, take a deep breath and slow down your pacing. I have to remind myself to do that. And just allow yourself to bring attention to something in your world right now, today, that you're feeling grateful for. And this particular project pack, we're, we're talking about transitions and changes. And I think what I like to bring light in that theme is that we're kind of always changing and always transitioning from one thing to another. And it's important for us to find gratitude and beauty and all of that in where we are right now. Um, cause that's really all we have today, right? Um, it's fun to look forward to things and it's fun to look back at things, but to really be able to look at where you are right now today and find gratitude in that is, is something that that's helpful in, in our journeys here. So we like to play with that on the tile and off the tile. And I think we're ready to get started, Miss Martha. Mm -hmm. We're going to, um, actually start with the tangle this time. And we're actually not gonna put a string down. Um, we're just gonna start with um, a black pen to get started. And as Martha said, we're gonna be playing with a tangle um, in its one form, and then we're gonna sort of fool around with it um, and kind of morph it into something different. So I'm working on this three and a half inch square tile and the tangle we're gonna be playing with is Cadent. And I am going to sort of hold my tile sort of on a diamond on the sort of diagonal here. And I'm going to be working up here and be putting a little bit of regular cadent, cadent right here that goes right off the edge of my tile. So for those of you that drawn cadent before, you're probably pretty familiar with it the way it goes. If you haven't, take your time, take it slow and uh, join me when you're ready. So I am going to start um, by basically drawing, it always reminds me of a pegboard, but I'm gonna be drawing some orbs that are kind of spaced out. And you want them to be aligned and about the same size to start off with regular cadence. And 
they're just uh, sort of making a grid of sorts. So I started here on the uh, on the diagonal. So it maybe takes a moment for you to see where we're at. But basically, you want all these orbs going in one direction. This one probably is falling off the edge. I don't know if that one might... And I'm going to do one more row, I think. Cadent is a one of our early tangles. And it is sort of a play off of the hound's tooth. That one kind of fall off the edge. And I don't know... If Pretend this one's up here like that. Oh, maybe I can put one more here. And then, all right. So once you have this pretty kind of metered out grid, just, I'm actually just doing it. I don't even want to go halfway. I want to go not even to the halfway point, okay? So once we have our orbs laid out, something like this, and, and you don't want them to be exact, it's hard to get everything exact, but you want them to be laid out in sort of a grid. Now I want you all to take a moment and I want you to close your eyes and I want you to envision the letter S. And I want you to think about the letter S, I want you to think about drawing the letter S, and I want you to say the letter S, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to draw a bunch of letter S's that connect all of these orbs. So let's just look at two orbs to get started, these two right here. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. And this plays with our uh, technique that we call take off and land. So I'm going to be looping my S around these orbs like so. So I'm going to be tracing over this orb and then traveling down and tracing that orb. Okay, so do you see my letter S? All right. So I'm going to go down to the next two orbs, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to draw my letter S, and I do it sort of without hitting the paper first. So this S shape is going to hug these orbs. S, and around. Always think the letter S. And, and you can do this sort of like tracing the path you're going to take before you actually draw it, if you like that trick. Okay. So now I'm going to do the next row. Letter S again, tracing over that orb shape. Letter S. I'm going to do all the ones I can see both orbs first, and then I'll work out the, uh, the orbs that seem to be trailing off. And then let's imagine there's one here. It's, again, it's the letter S. So I'm going to do that one imaginary just so I can get this right. Letter S. This one probably too. These ones that fall off the page, you really have to do that imaginary line. This one too. Okay. So my next step, I'm going to actually turn my tile and I'm going to do the same exact thing going in the other direction. So this can be tricky when you first start. So again, just if you need to close your eyes and envision that letter S, I'm going to take these two orbs and I'm going to do it first without drawing on the paper. I'm just going to do it in the air. The S was going to go down and around like this. So now I'm going to do it with my ink. Letter S. Okay. Start the next row. Tracing over that orb. Traveling down to the next one. So now you can sort of understand why we, I think this would probably have a little line there. Why do we 
kind of got inspired by the hound's tooth pattern. All right, it's actually very pretty as is. So this is our um, regular cadent here. Um, if there's any strokes you wanna redefine, take your time doing that. Okay, so this is our regular cadent. We're gonna take a little deep breath or a pause and we're gonna transition this regular cadent into a tangle that, or a tangulation we call crazy cadence. Crazy. <laughs> we go a little crazy. And when I draw ca crazy cadence, instead of drawing my whole grid out first, I just work it one orb at a time. So the way I'm going to begin here is um, we're going to start playing with different sized orbs and just see what happens as this regular cadence can sort of morph into crazy cadence. So I'm going to create a, a little tiny orb right here just for fun. And it's still always going to be a letter S, so we're not going to drift from that. And I'm going to connect these two orbs, this bigger orb with this tiny orb, with my letter S, like so. And now, to be a little crazy, I'm going to actually take this orb and this one and connect it with my letter S. So remember, do your little maybe in the air thing. And there we go. So now I'm going to draw another orb. This one I'm going to draw a kind of a bigger one. And I'm going to first, I think, connect this tiny orb and this big orb again with a letter S. So this is going to get kind of funny. So we might do this in the air again, going around that tiny orb and then circling around this big orb with your letter S. I'm going to be connecting these two orbs now with this S shape again. So now we're playing with sort of making these little maybe three-sided shapes, whatever it is. I'm just slowly connecting different sized orbs. The more wonky and the more different, I think you're going to start to see more morphing. So. It can connect them sort of however it makes sense or doesn't make sense. But the more variation, I think, in the size and the distance. So now I'm putting a more regular size orb, but I put it kind of close. So it's going to be kind of funky. I love how adaptable these simple strokes are. So you're taking, you're using the same exact strokes, just spacing them differently. And I can't even emphasize how important saying the letter S out loud is going to be because <laughs> trust me, I've done this a bunch of times and all of a sudden I'll be like, what? I, I left my mantra behind and then I'm going in a different direction, but you'll figure that out and it's okay to have exploratory tangles that take you different places before you get your rhythm. And I think I'm going to sort of start to not work to the edge. I'm going to let this crazy cadence sort of just work down the middle, I think. What do you think about that, Martha? Well, I just but love we'll how see. it's organically meandering. Yeah, so yours might go a little differently and that's fine. I think I'll put a little tiny one here. So the thing with crazy cadence is like almost like the more kind of unpredictable and random the orbs are distance wise and sh size wise, you're going to get kind of a more interesting, I guess, chaos to it. Um, and yours most certainly should look different than mine because you're going to be putting down different size orbs and different spaces and it will take you in different directions, so. And I'm not sure why, I'm sure you could play with Crazy Caden by putting all the orbs down first and explore how that works. Um, I know people have different approaches with it. For some reason, I like to play with this um, of putting down one orb at a time and it lets me 
sort of look at my composition and then play with that idea of reacting to where you're at. And so you can see as when it gets crazy, I'm, I'm connecting them in threes instead of fours, but um, you can do either way. They would both come out wonderfully. It's kind of just the rhythm it took. Um, but you really do want to focus on that idea of um, tracing over this one line or taking off and then traveling down to this other line and landing. So it's a great technique to play with. Don't hesitate to do your little um, draw in the air thing. I play with that all the time. If you're not, ever not sure where your stroke is going to be or your letter, letter S is getting confused, um, don't hesitate for sure. I'm trying to think when I'm going to stop, Martha, because I think I could. Um, actually, no. Yeah, just stop now? Okay, so I'm going to stop there. You could keep going, but um, I'm kind of enjoying how this is very uniformed up here, and then it morphs into this craziness, so. I mean, certainly you could fill the whole tile, and that would be really cool, too, but I kind of like the uh, meandering, and then, okay, where's it going to go next? I don't know. Maybe your mind takes you there. Right. I just love how this looks as is. I mean, there's so many endless possibilities of what you can fill these beautiful spaces with, right? These fragments. Yeah, it really becomes like a reticula. So you yeah, can, um, exactly. There and actually, there are so many different fillers with cadence that you can play with, um, and we're just gonna work on one of them. Yeah. So I'm going to um, do the same filler in each of these open spaces, but of course, it's going to have to adapt once we get down to these triangular spaces. But I'm gonna start up at the top, um, up here, where these. Um, cool curved S shapes have created these kind of wonky squares. So this is a very simple filler and I'm going to start by just putting a, a dot in the center of this one square that I'm just looking at right here, this little dot. And I'm going to just draw a, a curved line to the corner and then turn my tile and do it again. I'm sort of landing just like this S was landing. Right in the corner, right? So just dividing it into four. And then in each of these little spaces, maybe I'll close it up a little bit. Just a little loop, almost like a flower. And then I'm going to fill that in with some ink. All right, so I start by putting a little dot in the center, and then just a little curved line. And then a little loop where these intersect. And then inking in. So I'm going to work my way through all these squares. And I do recommend that you turn your tile each time you draw your strokes because it really does help with your perspective and it forces you not to rush through any one process, any one stage of your tile. I mean, of course, I could probably draw those strokes without moving my tile, but it's that exercise of turning the tile that just helps keep you slowing down, keep you appreciating each stroke. So you can see how you get into a rhythm 
kind of a nice peaceful place to be in your mind filling in simple strokes and hopefully maybe you're thinking of oh, if I do this next time mm -hmm. I'll do it this way or I'll fill it with this or I'll use a different ink color maybe. So I filled in all these square-like fragment um, in uh, reticulous spaces and now we've got these crazy triangle ones but I'm really I'm just gonna do the same basic uh, filler but adapting it to three points. So I start in the middle in the center point and then just a gentle curve line out to the three corners. And as we're putting these simple lines in, these, these inner uh, fillers are starting to create what we call meta patterns, or a lot of people call meta patterns, but they are really kind of aha, fun, fun things to watch develop. Working with this whole philosophy of laying down a reticula or a grid and then filling it with fragments is, is this kind of wonderful way to uh, ensure that you're going to be able to let go. Once that grid is down, all you have to do is to react to what is there. And yet you still really don't know what the outcome will be but you're in this kind of safe framework to draw and just let it, let it sort of develop in front of your eyes. Focusing in just on one triangle at a time, turning your tile perhaps, uh, taking a breath each time you turn your tile. It's so fun to see this sort of take shape in all these different ways. You can shade it or fill it in with other colors. Embellish. There. All right, so I'm gonna put down my Micron 01 pen and I'm gonna pick up this fun Jelly Roll Glaze. We used it, um, we haven't used it on this towel yet, but anytime you're picking up a gel pen, I always like to uh, just kind of loosen it up on the back. It's hard for you to see what I just did. I'm just playing around with that. And um, I'm gonna work with um, taking this Glaze pen, which works it will be working as a resist, if you will, because when we're going to put this graphite, uh, liquid graphite all over this um, tile, we want to have some spaces where we're not going to let it go. So it's going to be difficult for you to actually see the, the glaze ink going down, this jelly glaze, but I'm basically going to be filling in each one of these giant orbs that Molly set down when she began drawing her cadent. I know when I was working on a different tile, I did, I set up my cell phone on its side with the flashlight on so it could shine some light in that sort of sideways direction and that helped me see it. I mean, I can see what I'm doing here. And just like anything in Zentangle, if you miss one, well, you won't really know until you put on that graphite wash, but then it'll be an opportunity for you to do something with whatever gets left behind. There. So I've let the resist glaze dry. So you can see that, um, that gel ink has dried. And I'm going to pick up now this really cool um, general sketch and wash pencil. And I'm gonna add some of this magic graphite um, to the tile. So 
what I'm going to do just simply is go around without touching the um, gel that I just put down. I'm just going to go around each one of these orbs with, you know, pretty heavy load of, uh, of graphite here. Again, it's, it doesn't have to be an exact, um, you're not trying to fill any one particular space. You're really, most importantly, trying to avoid touching the graphite pencil onto that um, space. But once we take the paintbrush to it, um, you're going to be able to smooth out and manipulate where the graphite goes. This is just sort of getting it down on the paper. Love how this this pencil gets soft edges pretty quickly. Really helps work it work it into the paper here. It's really an interesting tool and I did find like I had to play with it for a long time and kind of just experiment but once I got rolling with it I loved all the different um, sort of I don't know like the layers of how this graphite could become like a watercolor it's super fun on the edges here I'm I'm strictly staying within this sort of amoeba shape I'm not I'm not putting graphite deliberately on the outside um, and Oh, you'll find that with your paintbrush, you can extend this graphite quite far, so it doesn't have to be on every single orb if you don't want it to be. Okay, so here we have quite a bit, right? We have quite a bit of uh, graphite on the paper. So I'm going to grab my paintbrush that came in my project pack. Of course, any, any paintbrush will do. Make sure... Um, some good uh, good amount of water on there and then just start spreading it out and now that you're working with the paintbrush you don't have to really worry about if you're touching those spaces where the resist was that resist will do its job at that point so I'm actually even allowing my paintbrush and there is some method to this madness here to spread some graphite outside the lines, outside this um, cadent blob that we've created. Working my way around Remembering that this, this whole process is a practice in layering different techniques and watching the different effects unfold as we go. One thing um, might try to load up and maybe have some deliberate dripping here and there loading up some extra water and encouraging the <laughs> flow of graphite I like that, that looks good Martha well it it creates a color that you didn't intend, perhaps. Light or dark, it's doing its own thing. Make some noise. And sort of leaving some of the tile without graphite is yeah. powerful too, because then you get that effect of it having, you know, comparison. Mm -hmm. Right. 
So a little messy, but that's what makes it so much fun. So we've got this beautiful gray tone and now we're gonna let this dry preferably overnight, but at least for a few hours. And then we're gonna come back and play with um, some of the fun that this graphite left behind in its wake, if you will. So we'll see you very soon. Okay, so we have our tile that's been sitting for a while now, and you're gonna have to make a call on, on how long your tile needs to dry, but it should be, it feels, should feel the whole tile should be dry to the touch. And um, depending on where you're li you live, this might be um, really different. It's very dry up here in New England right now. The heat's on everywhere. So this dried um, in a, an hour or two or something, yeah, okay. but um, for, in some cases you might wanna wait a whole day or whatever it is. It really depends on um, where you're at. Um, so anyway, we have, um, our sort of dried up graphite here. We have some cool layers going on and we're going to start to add some sort of finishing touches here. And, uh, I am going to play a little bit with this new edge that Martha created with the graphite. So we've been playing around with these cool lines that connect these orbs, but now I'm going to kind of, I want to make it so my... Caden and Crazy Caden are sort of holding on to this graphite a little bit. So I'm going to do that in a way where I'm going to just play with drawing a line that seems to kind of hook over here. It's kind of a, a playful way to kind of play around with this. So I'm going to show you a couple times. I'm going to take off and land from these orbs and then I'm going to just find a kind of just grabbing onto the edge there just for fun. I'm gonna grab another one here, gonna take off and land on that orb and then kinda just hook it over the edge there. If you wanna even add a little weight on the end there, you could do that. So you're like tethering a balloon or something, right? This one right here, I have this cool sort of longer drip. So I'm going to um, play around with that one a little bit more. And, you know, I'm using this Micron 01, by the way, right here with the black in case you didn't pick up on that. And I'm going to have this just sort of wrap around that drip using that S shape there. And now I'm going to sort of pretend like it goes behind this drip and have it come around again, which is kind of fun. Sort of playful right there. See if we can do that again right here. Again, take off and land. This time I'm going to go around. Oh, that's so fun. Isn't that kind of fun? See if we can do that again here. I'm gonna go behind, around. It looks so complicated, but it's really just that S shape. Right? And you can add a little weight on them if you wanna play with it a little. See, we have another one here, but I don't have an orb nearby. How am I gonna do this one? Maybe I'll, I'll try it here, see what happens. Well, that looks pretty good. Oh, it's fun. It's added really just like fun. a little detail to it where it, it looks like it's hanging on to the graphite we put on there. Um, just a simple detail, but makes a huge difference. Martha, what do you think about adding just a little weighting here around our orbs just here and there? Yeah, I think, again, it adds to the what we call a drama effect on a tile. Any, anytime you weight things down with some ink, 
help draw the eye in a little bit. So I'm I'm basically just going back in and and we've talked about this before, but it's kind of like adding like a little glue or mortar um, here and there. You don't have to do it everywhere, but I'll sometimes go back and do this um, on a lot of my tiles just to sort of emphasize different things. It seems like such a little detail, but I feel like it kind of, it helps almost like I don't, I don't know what I'm trying to say. It's almost like it finalizes things or put a, puts little deep finishing touches or on. anchors the whole that's thing That's the word, the paper. yeah. That's what I was looking for. And like I said, you don't have to go, you know, all around, but just kind of here and there adding a little bit. A lot of times we call this adding some love and it's almost like you're revisiting all your strokes and touching it up here and there like tidying your house or something. It's actually a wonderful opportunity to appreciate the lines you've already drawn. Right? And you just say, wow, that was a really great S that I drew here. <laughs> <laughs> or sometimes I, you know, my hand is shaky or uncertain the first go around and adding a little, um, a little bit of love sort of does help anchor it, you know, gives it a little more structure. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with all this and you can you can always kind of add love forever, I feel like, but I'm I'm feeling feeling good about this. I'm going to I'm going to add another detail right now before I shade. And I'm going to swap pens for a second here. I'm going to play with the micro perm. And in our intro video, we talked about how we, we put this pen in there um, because we always like to offer new uh, tools to all of you guys to play with. And so I hope you um, add the microperm as like a cool tool in your toolbox. We don't use it that much, but when whenever you want to put a black mark over anywhere you had a gel pen, the, mark, the microperm works great because it is it is actually a pen that's designed to to work on shiny surfaces, on plastics and stuff. So it works nicely on top of the, the gel ink. And so I'm going to actually put what I like to call almost like a, as if make it look like a flathead screw. Um, so I'm gonna draw right on top of my orbs and I'm gonna add almost to make it look like a, a bunch of screws that are holding this all together which is kind of fun. I'm just going to start by working all the big ones and then I'm going to decide if, if I want to do the small ones. So again, I'm drawing right on top of that gel ink we had put down as a resist and it adds, it does have this little shininess to it. So just playing with letter with layers here and I want these um, screws to be going in all different directions. I love this addition to the tile because the the whole composition is really orbs and curved lines. So now you've got some straight lines in there um, to complement all the curves. If anybody's ever used an IdentiPen, also made by Sakura, this is actually the same ink that's in an IdentiPen. It's just in a fine a fine liner style. There you go. I think we got all of them, right? So we're getting close here. I'm feeling like I want to add a little contrast because right now I'm feeling like the graphite got a little flat. So I think I want to add some more dark. And so I'm going to go back in with my graphite pencil and I'm going to darken back up. I'm just going to do one here for you to see. So I'm really taking my graphite and really getting dark just around the the screw or the orb, whatever you want to call it. And then just really lightly buffing around that. So I'm going to do that to all of them. All right. So I definitely added a lot of contrast on mine. I wanted to darken up around these um, little screw heads or orbs, whatever you want to call them. So um, just finishing up those little details. Um, if you want to add a little white charcoal, 
throat line. And I don't know, it depends on where it makes sense on your tile. Maybe a little bit in the center here. Um, I might. See, I don't know. I want to. I don't want to take away from these little. Yeah, you don't need much. You don't need much. Yeah, and your tile might be different. You might already have that contrast going. Yeah. Um, depending on how dark or light you put down that first. Oh, actually, wash. yeah, that kind of adds a nice little. That white charcoal is pretty powerful too. Like even yeah. a couple little little quick strokes around. Um. But you can figure out what makes most sense for you. I think one of the messages of this whole tile too is just like adding these layers and layers is um, it's something that takes your work to a different place. And so think about maybe a previous tile that you've done and what could you even go back and add to at this point. Now right. you have some new skills and new tools. Well, and actually, you can kind of see how it does it does brighten it up. Yeah. I was unsure at first, but we do so many different iterations of these, and I'm like... And that's something you might play with, too. Like, try this tile again, you know. And when you're working so closely with something, you kind of maybe lose sight of the effects of what you're working on. But, you know, hold, again, we always say hold it at arm's length. Right, and really yeah. appreciate your work when you're done, or even throughout the process. Um, and I guarantee you this one, when you look at it tomorrow, you're gonna be like, oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. There is a, I think it's a Winston Churchill quote, and I'm not gonna say the whole thing because it has kind of like a word in it, but um, his, his quote is, if you're going through um, a not so very good situation, um, keep going. Um, and sometimes when you get to a point in a tile, you're like, I don't know about this, but I just always encourage my students to keep going, keep, just keep at it. If you're going through a storm, keep going. Right, exactly. And you never know, actually, sometimes, um, you're overthinking things while you're in it. Um, I'm going to add a little highlight on some of these. I might take my tortillon, actually. Sometimes my finger gets a little... little highlight on these. Well, I don't know. I kind of like how this is coming together, Miss Martha. Caden to crazy Caden. Got all this. Maybe a little shadow on the edge of this here. Well, that's fun. Yeah, this idea of sort of playing with the little drips, having things kind of circle around them is kind of fun. Could add love on these tiles forever, but I think I think I'm close here. What do you think, Martha? I think it's a well loved tile. It's well loved. All right, Martha's like uh, time to put down your pencils. <laughs> time <laughs> the to put. The exam is over. <laughs> put down your pencils. But there's just one more little bit. Okay, one more right here. I love how you can layer these graphite. It's awesome. All right, that's pretty good. Should we put our chops on, Martha? Chop chop. Let's do it. I'm gonna put mine right here. Okay, so Martha's over here. I'm actually gonna use the microperm just because I can. Okay. Lovely. Well, I think we did a darn good job there. Maybe it goes that so way. So playful. Maybe this way? That's upside down. There you go. There we go. Awesome. Just kidding. <laughs> no up or down. Have a good one, you guys. Take Thanks care. for joining us. Bye.